This video is brought to you by Otis. I got a potion. Got a Vulpix too. There's a Machop and a Roly Coly Carvana. Ooh, what is next? Hatterene. It's shining. And then it's Hop. A full art Hop. I tried making a song. It didn't really work. There's Mar Milo, Arbok, and Bead. And a fire energy. Ooh. But yeah, hey there. Aren't Pokemon cards fun? Like, opening them and seeing what you get is honestly just as exciting as playing the game itself. Building a collection, seeing how valuable certain cards that you get are later, it's all so interesting. Like, when I was first into Pokemon cards, Gen 1 and 2, I had no idea that what I was using willy-nilly with my disgusting booger hands and no protective sleeve was going to be worth hundreds of dollars in 20 years. And as a six-year-old, I also just didn't care. But now I do, and jeez, we all know the Charizard memes. Oh yeah, I had a Mint Hollow first edition Charizard. You know, the card that everyone says they had as a kid, but then they lost it somehow. Or they still have it, but they don't know where it went. That's just losing it with more words. Also, yeah, that's, that's not the brag you think it is. Like, yeah, I had it, and then I ruined it. I could have sold it for like nine grand, but I just don't have it anymore. Cool. I mean, thanks, I guess, because you ruining and or losing that actually increases the value of the few remaining ones. So I guess you did the preserved card holders a favor by accident. But let's forget all about the old cards for a moment. Have you seen what some modern Pokemon cards are going for today? Like, oh my god, sure! Some of them, they're rare and they look cool and are popular. Maybe they're even really, really good competitively. You know, they got a lot of utility. But like, they're still new. They could still print more of them, meaning their value would fluctuate dramatically. But also, they could always not make any more of them. It's quite a risk-reward system, because at least with old cards, you know they are done. So their value usually does not spontaneously fluctuate all at once, and rather, the value just sort of rises over time. That kind of sounds like the stock market, but a lot more tangible, making it an easy way to explain how the stock market works, sorta. Huh. Well, in this video, let's answer the question, why are Pokemon cards so expensive? Now, let me tell you about this video's sponsor. Otis makes investing in culturally significant collectibles, sneakers, and art easy and accessible. It's like Robin Hood, E-Trade, and Acorns, but for culture. So honestly, it's a lot cooler. The value of these things are constantly fluctuating, exactly like stocks, meaning, of course, there's money to be made through investing. Each cultural asset on the platform has been securitized with the SEC and broken into shares. Now, like stocks, shares sounds like another complicated, abstract economic thing that not everyone understands. To put it simply, a share is one of the equal parts into which a company's capital is divided, entitling the holder to a proportion of the profits. But even simpler, if you own 10% of the total number of shares in something, you own 10% of that thing. When a company talks to its shareholders, it's talking with its main owners. And thanks to the convenience of the app, members can buy and sell shares at any time of the day, and the trades are matched daily. Plus, new cultural assets are launched on the app weekly, which, of course, includes some of these extra-rare, extra-expensive Pokémon cards. Take this 1999 base set first edition Shadowless Hollow Raichu number 14 card rated a 10 gem mint. Its sales price, as of February 2020, was $2,325. Now that's a lot on its own, that's like a down payment on a car. But then, in October, it was $25,000. And you know that that card probably only cost a few cents to manufacture. It's but through time and scarcity, such sought-after cultural icons become more and more valuable. And with Otis, it's a lot easier for individuals to own a part of that culture. As adults, we're always told to invest, 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 but also to never invest in something we don't understand. And since the stock market is pretty complicated, even to economists, many have already chosen to invest in something easier to understand, cards and collectibles. So, if this sounds like something you would be interested in, be sure to check out Otis with the link at the top of the description to learn more and get your first share free when you fund your account.
Terms apply. Now, let's gush some more about expensive pieces of cardboard. Though I guess that's not super fair to say. I mean, what is paper money if not expensive pieces of cloth paper or plasticky paper in more advanced countries? So Charizard. Recently, a Charizard sold for $320,000. That's incredible. That's inconceivable even. That's a house. Heck, just last year. Pokemon card unboxing and opening videos went mainstream again. Tons of big YouTube names started doing huge haul videos, which of course made the values of certain modern cards go up more, which then got more people into collecting the cards again, which led to more card scarcity, which led to the value going even higher. And not just the modern ones either. There was that unopened box of first edition cards that sold for almost half a million dollars. I could buy my house twice with just that box of cards. Gosh. We bottom pexed something society. So what drives this price? Well, traditionally in these secondhand markets, it is scarcity and rarity, both of which only compound as the years and years go on. It's why first edition anythings are always more valuable. But also, some of these cards were already printed in a way that makes some of them rare to begin with. Typically, these are cards that are or were good competitively when playing the game or they are of special characters, sought after targets. Okay, so there's your first bit of scarcity. People will buy more and more packs of cards to get what they want. And if a lot of people want a certain thing, say a popular Pokemon like Charizard, well, it just makes sense to make that be a little harder to get, but not too hard. You don't want people giving up. But Pokemon cards have been around for 25 years now. And these unboxing videos have always existed. Well, as long as YouTube has existed. But is one polish looking Logan all it takes for the trends to break and cause prices to skyrocket up? Is it just because Pokemon cards are cool now because this guy that children idolize for some reason says they are cool? Or are there a number of factors piling on? Well, like everything, it's complicated. And of course, being a 2020 thing, it all starts with a bat. This flying rodent made us all stay indoors, and thus all alternate media started growing in value, from cryptocurrency all the way to things like sports cars, magazines, and NES carts. Things are going up in price because people are buying back their childhoods. The kids who grew up with these first edition Pokemon cards are in their 20s and 30s now, with incomes of their own, which of course drives up the price too. And while the COVID-19 pandemic caused most folks hardship, there were many, mainly middle and upper class folks, who now had more disposable income due to less going out. Simple math at this point. Plus, one of the defining things about millennials right now is that we are all spending a lot of money on bits of plastic, plush, and cardboard that makes us happy until the world ends at the hands of previous generations. And being stuck at home more, we notice all of the spare room that we have on our shelves. And gosh, wouldn't it be nice to remember the good old days? Back before Facebook started the inevitable collapse of the planet? Back before our parents and grandparents became the very thing they warned us about? Simpler times. We millennials are buying back our childhoods, which for many means Pokemon cards. We all want to get our favorites back. And remember the recent Pokemon Generation set? Oh god, that was five years ago! That catered to this nostalgia perfectly, which really got the ball rolling on all this, leading eventually to today. So, those of us with a favorite Pokemon or two, even if we don't play the game, we still want those pieces of cardboard. And what price do you put on joy? Nostalgia is for sure a major driving factor. And that's also a big reason why, even with the current cards, Charizard is still the most valuable. Shiny Charizard go burr in your bike spokes because you thought doing so would be cool. Not so cool are you anymore, huh? Charles? Quality is a major factor as well. There's a whole service dedicated to authenticating and grading cards, PSA, the professional sports authenticator, who originally just graded sports trading cards, but now they get a lot more Pokemon cards than they do sports. They get a card sent to them to grade and make sure it's real uh, to authenticate it. They are then given a score between zero and 10, with zero being, this is literally garbage to 10 being, 
absolutely perfect. Mint, well-contained, better than factory new. Yeah, you can get a brand new pack of cards, open it, and then that card could only receive a nine. Sometimes cards get a little scuffed in shipping to the store. Sometimes the printer was off by a tenth of a millimeter while printing this specific card. Or there's a, there was a fleck of dust under the ink. All sorts of factors. That incredibly expensive Charizard? Of course it was a 10. Meanwhile, other holographic Charizards of the same variety, the same set and the same everything, get graded sevens and eights and are only worth a couple grand. It's pretty exponential. These days, people take much better care of their trading cards. So we'll see down the line that the new cards today won't ever be as valuable as the cards from the old days. So you can't buy a bunch of modern cards in bulk today and expect to make the same massive profit in two decades that these two decade old card holders are experiencing now, even though they're the same age. It's not just the age that's the factor. Consider the compounding rarity. The most sought after cards were already the rarest when they were new. Trading card games weren't taken as seriously back then, so people didn't really take care of those cards. Playing with them on the asphalt in the playground, holding the deck together with a rubber band, no sleeves, used by children, often traded, stolen, or thrown out. Yeah, it's no wonder the classic cards are so rare and worth so much. Then considering the quality of the individual cards, how many of those Charizards are damaged beyond repair? How many of them were thrown out? How many of them are just sevens and eights due to like a tiny little thing? You know, tiny scratch? Ooh, that scratch cost like 10 grand. And since the originally holographic Charizard was the most sought after card back in the day, to the point where it's almost a meme, all future rare holographic Charizards are automatically worth a lot more than your standard couple cent card. Which also compounds onto all of the other points. So much so that even the booster packs that have a chance of containing a rare holographic Charizard are worth more than the ones from sets that don't. And speaking of the cards, due to the sudden boom in popularity, suddenly this set of Pokemon cards becomes a lottery. It's like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Some of these packs of cards have a golden ticket. It's just in the shape of a burnt orange egg with wings and an elongated head. But like with those Wonka bars, you get scalpers. People buying these cards in droves just for the off chance they find one or two of these cards to turn around and make a profit. And since they too are buying all these up, that only further compounds onto everything else. It really is the perfect storm, and it is still raging on. But clearly, not all of us can afford a quarter of a million dollar Pokemon card. Just as I'm sure none of us can afford to buy any major corporation like Amazon, Tesla, Walmart, GameStop, Google, whatever. But we can buy a piece of it, a share, through the stock exchange. And similarly, we can also own a share of these culturally powerful collectibles with Otis. Sneakers, sports cars, comic books, artwork, NES games, Pokemon cards, and more. Personally, I've picked up some shares of this Blastoise because it's my favorite of the original starters, so if you've considered investing, consider Otis. Learn more about it with the link below. And thanks so much for watching. And until next time, never stop using your noggin. Got one more pack. Let's see. It starts with a potion again. All of these have started with a potion. Full heal, roly coly again, machop again, sizzlipede again. Another potion. At least this one's shiny, holographic. Marnie, it's not the full art one. Uh, Steel, Rotom Phone, Malamar, Turfield Stadium.